Hi everyone, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. My name is Mai, this is Herky, this is Milton, and welcome! We hope you're all doing super well and today's video is about Herky and Milton's grooming routine and we've had a lot of requests to do this video so I thought I would share all that with you today. So we'll go over all the ears, the fur, the eyes, and the teeth, and of course the claws. This is just what we do on a weekly basis. So I'm going to show you step by step what we do, the frequency of everything, the tools we use. We always have a lot of questions about the products and the tools that we use, so everything's going to be broken down in this video. And before we jump into the video, I hope you're subscribed to this channel. And if you're not, please do hit that notification bell. Alright, let's jump into the video. Alright, so let's start with fur. Dogs in general do require frequent brushing, but depending on the breed, it can vary. Cavaliers do have longer fur as well as for example, Golden Retrievers, Pomeranians, uh, Poodles, any dogs, Schnauzers, any dog with longer hair would require more frequent brushing than let's say dogs that have really really short fur. So it's up to you to determine the frequency at which you do it. Of course, if you have a Cavalier and they have long ears, that is also an area that you should brush daily. And I'm going to show you the three brushes that I use. I always use these three brushes and of course I try to do it daily. Although it doesn't always happen, to be honest. So the first brush that I'm gonna talk about is a de-shedder. The most frequent brand for this is the Furminator. I use the one from Fergo Pet just because the Furminator is so expensive and this, to be honest, does a really good job. This has really short and dense metal teeth on it and what it does is that it removes so much fur from their undercoat. And we love using this, especially during the shift of seasons when they shed a lot and you can see how much fur actually comes out of it. The second brush that I use is this one. It's sort of like a deep tangler brush. It's sort of very prickly, longer metal teeth on the comb and this is great to detangle their hair and to get stuff out of their fur. You know those little sticky balls uh, that are called burrs? Those get caught in the girls fur all the time and the best way honestly to get them out is with this brush. Uh, before I had this brush I had such a hard time getting burrs out of their fur and the best way that I could find to remove them was unfortunately to yank them out piece by piece and ultimately had to cut out some of their fur. But this is such a game changer, it only takes a few seconds and it gets everything out. Little leaves, grass, anything that gets stuck to the fur or you need to detangle something, use this brush. Sometimes even when you see some tangles and knots in their fur and you think you're gonna have to cut it, this one can do the trick. This brush is from Wall and it's pretty inexpensive. I think it goes for like $15. And last but not least is this brush and this is their smoothing brush. Technically this brush is a human hair brush and it has a mix of boar and plastic brushes. You see Milton really likes this brush and she loves getting brush because it's sort of like a little massage. And this is just an overall smoothing brush if you want their fur to look more tamed and more groomed and pretty, this is the brush that you should use. Again, this is a human brush but it works great on them thanks to our friend Michelle who introduced us to this brush. So this is a bass brush. It's a wild boar nylon and the handle is bamboo. It's really good quality. It's pretty expensive as a brush. I think it goes for like $30, $35 but it works really well and as you can see Milton always wants to get brushed with this thing. There you go. Yeah, you love it. You love this brush. This is also really good compared to the other two brushes to massage them. When Milton is in heat or when we used to have the tick medication as an oil form and it used to really itch their back, she would always ask to get brushed with this as it really relieves itchiness on her back and she really, really enjoys it. So again, brushing is going to depend on the breed of dog that you have. I try to do it daily for Herky and Milton with the smoothing brush, but when they come back from outside and they have a lot of stuff stuck to their fur, then I would use the detangler and when it's shedding season, I'm going to use the Furminator on them weekly. I also like to have a little pair of rounded scissors around just because there's always little pesky knots that form uh, under their armpits or close around their bum areas and really this is just to be able to remove those knots quickly. You just have to trim really close to the knot for it not to show too much. 
Okay, next let's move on to ears. These are my two favorite products for ears and if you have a dog that has flappy ears like Hercule Milton, you should take care of their ears twice a week and that's what we do. Uh, these are my two favorite products as I mentioned. This one is from Burt's Bees. It's an ear cleaner with peppermint and witch hazel. It's 99.8% natural and I, I really like the smell of these products. It smells really clean and like I feel really confident that their ears are clean and what this does is that it um, it keeps the inside of their ears dry as you can imagine floppy ears like this can gather quite a bit of humidity and bacteria under them so it makes it really prone to infections thankfully Herky is almost Herky's four years old now Milton's almost two and they both never had ear infections and I think it's because we do take care of their ears twice a week so what you want to do is get some cotton rounds or any sort of cotton swabs just to clean the outside of their ear and Herky does get quite dirty ears so you want to clean out the outside of the ear get into all the nooks and crevices and you can see that it can get quite dirty and then what you want to do is drop a few drops directly in the ear canal so it really gets all the way down to the ear and then you just let them shake out the excess liquid and that's going to ensure that the entire ear canal is clean and dry. Also very important that if you do decide to use q-tips to clean the outside of their ear, do not use it in the actual ear canal. You don't know where their eardrum is and you can actually hurt them. So just be careful if ever you want to use q-tips on them, just use it on the very outside of the ear only. Next let's get on to eyes. And eyes are pretty important to clean, especially dogs with white fur can tend to get eye stains. And what I've noticed with Herky and Milton is that it's very cyclic. Herky and Milton both had very bad tear stains when they were puppies and when they were teething, but eventually it just went away. Now Herky has pretty clean eyes overall. She still gets a bit of eye boogers in the morning, which we like to just remove with the Kleenex. But Milton does still have a lot of tears, but they don't stain as much. It just stays very wet. So what we like to do on a daily basis is use an ear cleaner like this. This is technically a tear stain remover and it's not irritating to eyes. It's from the brand Hunter. I don't know if this is available everywhere, but we do have this one in Canada if you go to local pet stores. And it's really non-irritant. I also use these with a cotton round and just wipe off the tears. And if your dog does have a lot of tears like Milton and it gets to smell like Milton, I would suggest to wipe the area very dry as much as you can because it's when it's all humid and it's wet and then there's bacteria, there's pollution from outside that gathers up in those tear stains and then it can start developing bacteria and that's when it smells. Another tip that I have for the smell is to use just a bit of hydrogen peroxide or apple cider vinegar on a cotton swab and be very careful not to get too close to the eye and then you can just sort of rub that on the actual tear stain to remove any bacteria colonies so that it can help with the smell. Again, you should be very careful not to get that too close to the eye because as you can imagine, it can burn. But I'm just saying that in cases like Milton where it smells really bad, you can use that in order to diminish the smell. Next, let's go on to teeth. And I do try to brush Herky and Milton's teeth on a daily basis, but truth be told, it happens maybe two or three times a week. I try to be better at it, but I'm just not, to be honest. And brushing my own teeth is hard enough. So I like to use an enzymatic toothpaste. This one is from Veto Kennel Care. I get this at the vet. Again, it's an enzymatic toothpaste. It's poultry flavored. And you can also use this for cats. This helps to clean and polish teeth. They really like the taste of this. It doesn't smell very good to be honest and enzymatic toothpaste is better than other toothpaste according to me because it actually helps the breakdown of tartar on your dog's teeth. It's kind of tricky with Cavalier especially since they have like longer lips. So uh, I just try to brush as much as I can front teeth, back teeth. I'm not really able to go behind their molars on the inside but if you can by all means go ahead. It really depends on if your dog is going to let you do this or not. If it's more difficult to go with the brush there's also the little thumb things that you can put on your thumb and then put your finger in your dog's mouth. I just find that their teeth are a bit small for that but if that works for you then perfect. So again I try to do this on a daily basis but truthfully it happens two or three times a week. If you don't brush your dog's teeth then make sure they can chew something every day to help activate the saliva around the mouth and help prevent tartar buildup. Any sort of chewing activity would really help the buildup but try to go for products that are more natural. A lot of products like those dentist sticks have a lot of fillers and bad ingredients in them so just 
look out for the ingredients. And last but not least are claws, and I think I've mentioned this before, but these are my favorite. These are from Wall also. There's different shapes and styles of nail cutters, but this is the one I'm comfortable with because I feel like this really fits well in the hand and it also allows for a good control. I always follow the instruction for your nail clipper itself and just be careful that you don't cut your dog's claws too close to the red vein. If your dog has black nails, it can make it a bit more difficult and in that case, just clip the nails little by little only to make sure that you don't snip the vein because that can be very painful and it can bleed a lot. The frequency of nail cutting really depends on the dog. I think ever since we had a Herky, honestly, I think we clipped her nails three or four times. She's, she's four years old, her nails just don't grow very much or she just digs a lot and they trim themselves. I don't know, Milton, we do need to do every two months or so, I would say. Her nails are due to be cut right now and I'll insert some footage of us doing it. I also have a good tip in order to make it easier, especially if your dog has grinch feet and very furry paws like Herky and Milton. You can use a fishnet stocking in order to remove all the fur out of the way so that you can clearly visualize the nail and the vein. And of course, with any of these activities, I do recommend that you have treats around to make sure that they get used to all of these things. Teeth brushing is a bit easier since it already tastes like food, but for anything like ear care, eye care, brushing, nail cutting, I always like to have treats around and give them treats after just to positively reinforce their grooming. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any video suggestions also, I'm always Always open to hear your suggestions. Also, I wanted to mention that if you like my shirt, I'll link our boutique down below. This is our new line for Cavology, and we also have six brand new leashes for summer. So I hope you check it out. I wish you all a lovely week or weekend. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Bye.